Welcome to today's video on Polaroid Code, which is a dumb name, but uh, we're going to look today at using SVG filter, which is incredibly powerful. I'm only on the, the start of my treacherous journey trying to learn all about it, but uh, I already kind of got to the stage where I can create this cool spotlight effect, which is quite nice. You can probably do it with clip pat and CSS as well, I would imagine. But uh, I think the possibilities, what you can do with SVG is incredible. I think I've seen some people kind of make like the screen look like it's sand. It's just mad stuff. So today we're going to discuss this. But the first thing I want to show you is CSS filters, just in case you don't know them. CSS filter actually comes from SVG filter, but it's a less powerful version. I go into this in more detail in the blog post, which will be in the description. So filter. Uh, you can use blur, there's a few of them you can use, you can search up the documentation, it doesn't really matter. So you can see it blurs the image with uh, SVG filter, you can actually blur horizontal or vertical with CSS, you're going to do like across the whole thing. So that's already a uh, weakness and we can just look at one more CSS filter before we get to the fun SVG filter stuff. So 100%. So that gives us a grayscale. That is CSS filters. Yeah, they're, they're easy to use, they're just less powerful, but if you want some simple effect like this because you're a boring bastard, <laughs> you can do it. So I'm actually going to remove this, remove this, and then just show you the base, the base setup for an SVG filter. You see the image has disappeared. That's because we've defined a filter, but we have not defined uh, any primitives. So when we when we were using like um, blur and stuff out here, they're called CSS functions, but in SVG these are called primitives, right? So first kind of difference, it's, it's important to know as well. If you want to sound smart to people, like oh that's not actually a function, that's a primitive. You know, you might impress people or probably not impress them. Uh, so when we're creating our effect, I'm gonna jump into the spotlight effect in my blog post. I have way more information before this, before we get to this, but um, you can check out the blog post for that. The video would have been too long, probably too boring. So we're gonna get to our cool effect right away. So in SVG, you have two types of lighting you can use. Now we're gonna be using lighting because that's uh, what we need, for example. So you can use FAFE which is a filter effect. Every single primitive begins with FE. So you can do FE diffuse lighting. And then we can close this guy out up here. Yeah, the spelling can be pretty, pretty bad. So like most things, you want to give this a couple of attributes. Um, not the CSS. Code panel actually auto formats. So I don't need to worry about it. So what we want to do is we want to first give it a lighting color. In our case, this will be white. And then you also want to give it an, an in. Now in, I think there's two possibilities for it. You, well no, there's actually way more than two possibilities what I'm talking about. But we're gonna be using source graphic. Paul, what is the source graphic? Is the guy down here? Is this the Pauline codes thing we were seeing previously? And then the last attribute we need is result. This is really, really powerful. Result is uh, when this primitive is applied on an image, the result is the result of that primitive being applied. So, like when we put the grade scale on the image um, at the start, that the result there would have been a grade scale image. So then you could change something else onto that. So you could do a blur onto that. This is really powerful. I think when you're making these primitives to always put result down, because it's a really good habit. So we're gonna call it diffuse lighting, like this. Now the next, so in SVG you have two types of light, but then you also have multiple sources of light. I think there's three. The one we need, which is really, when I was looking up how to do a spotlight effect, I was actually blown away to find that I have a filter effect called spotlight. You do much more work on the lazy effect, but uh, it's really good to have it right out the gate. So you can do FE Spotlight. You can see our image looking great at the moment, nice and black. <laughs> so for Spotlight takes a lot more, um, like a lot more attributes. 
So you can give it an X. So where do you want to place the spotlight? I always kind of do X 100 and Y 100. And then we can move on and we give it the Z on the Z index. You want to do 400 because you kind of want this to come out on top. And then the main ones, these is when I'm going to make a future tutorial on how to animate this stuff. But the main ones are points at X. And this is where your spotlight, your spotlight is going to shine. So again, I do 200. Now I've like, Paul, how the fuck to get those values? I got those values because I was messing around with this for absolutely ages. So the best thing you can do when uh, learning this is to go in, get a filter. I'm actually going to link to a tool in the description. It's also linked in the article where you can, where it automatically generates this code for you. But it's kind of messy. So you have to go in and edit it. And then, okay, so I've kind of skipped some stuff there. We point to X, point to Y, point to Z. That's kind of like where your light will shine. And then this is a big thing. So this is limiting. You can see why I said this stuff is confusing. <laughs> limiting code angle. That is kind of like the angle you want your spotlight to, um, you kind of want it to shine. Now you see, we have done our spotlight. Now, like I know some of this stuff is confusing, but that's not that much code. You know, we have a primitive and we have a child primitive. There's only two possibilities of these and then you have your spotlight. Again, in the article, I have examples before this. So this stuff probably would be a bit clearer, but you can read the article for that if you like and if you're actually enjoying this stuff for some mad reason. So our spotlight is now done, but we haven't. So our image is below this spotlight. So we kind of want to shine our image. We kind of want the, our image to be like seen through the spotlight. So what you use then is you use this thing in SVG called FE Composite. Now, if you come from a graphics background, I certainly don't. But if you do, you probably know all about composition. Uh, in my article, I linked a really good um, post by Sarah Sweden. I probably Sweden. I probably pronounce that name awfully, but um. She discusses it and it's an absolute brilliant post. And uh, even she's another post on code drops on SVG filters. I really recommend checking out. She really goes into the proper stuff. I'm definitely, definitely a beginner, but I'm just sharing what I've learned so far to help you kind of make some cool stuff. So again, we have this FE composite. This takes in a couple of uh, things as well. You've in, like above, we have source graphic. And then we have in two. In two is the second thing we're passing in. Now you're like, oh, what else can I pass in? We're gonna actually pass in the result of this guy. So you can do this. So this is us kind of like linking our, our primitives um, together. You have operator. So you have multiple operator modes. Uh, I recommend uh, Googling them, but the one we use is arithmetic, which gives us the power of kind of like intersecting the two images. Arithmetic comes with a thing called K1 attribute, which we can set to 1. When you use arithmetic, you have K1, K2, K3, K4. Um, I read a bit about them. It was really, really confusing, but I just went in and started playing around SVG, and I changed K1 to 1. And then I could see my effect working properly, and I just removed the other ones, so they probably default to 0. I uh, would give this a result as well, even though we don't really need to, because we're not using it anywhere else. But all is good practice. So we'll do this. So you see now we have a spotlight with my image below and then you can kind of play around with um with these guys. So I say points at Y 200. It will, uh, you see now it's moved down. So that is a nice introduction to SVG filter. This kind of skipped introduction, but um, this is how they work. You know, it's based on, you declare your filter up here. You don't need to use defs. Um, then when it comes to SVG filters, it's mostly just searching for what you need and figuring out the attributes that you use because it is such a deep subject and it can be really, really boring <laughs> to be to be honest. But when I give yourself, like I gave myself a challenge and oh, could I create a spotlight effect that was shining through to an image? And yeah, it took me it took me probably three, three, four hours, I'd say, to get like a clean example. It didn't have a bunch of code. But uh, in that process, I learned a lot. So... If you want to read more about this, I recommend heading over to my blog post, which I will leave in the description. I have like hardly any subscribers on this channel, so if you could subscribe, that'd be great. If you don't want to, fair enough. 
and if you could even click like because i think the youtube algorithm would then make the video available to more people or more people to see the video so it's up to yourself i don't really care <laughs> what i do but uh i hope you learned something off this i know it's we kind of went in and went through it quickly but uh this is the point of the video to kind of maybe entice you to learn elsewhere or go to my blog post or go to someone else who's smart on a blog post so yeah that's me so have a good day